and you know, yeah, 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 Alderman Alder? Here. Alderman Campbell? Here. Alderman Galloway? Here. Alderman Gardner? Here. Alderman Snyder? Here. Alderman Vaughn? Here. We have six aldermen present. We have a quorum. All right, has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes from February 16th, uh, non-legislative meeting, and February 21st, regular? If so, I will entertain a motion. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. If there's no objection. I would vote that we uh, uh, approve both sets of minutes from February 16th and February 21st. Uh, motion was made by... <clears throat> Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Galloway to approve the meeting, meeting for minutes from February 16th, non-legislative meeting, and February 12th, 21st, regular meeting. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, moving on to first reading of bills and resolutions. Mr. Schneider. Your Honor, I'm moving to be in place for number 3434 on this first reading of my language, please. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Snyder, second in the argument, Alderman Gardner, to place Bill 3434 on its first reading by title and description only. All those in favor? An ordinance approving source well co cooperative purchasing agreements to utilize the cooperative procurement program. Okay. I think it's going to be Ms. Payne. Ms. Payne. Um, this. Uh, is an approved Missouri state vendor. You approved this back in February. You approved the big state bid. There was a whole list of them. It was like 15 pages long. Um, mine didn't get on the list. That was my fault. We were just a little late. So I just want to add this source well as another state bidder. They have, um, they are approved um, state Missouri vendor. And we just want to add them to that big 15 page list to get them on there. Um, they do things like, they, they were the ones that we went through with our bus when we got it last year. Source well is something that we used. Um, and then they do things like the Daptronic for our scoreboard, just in case floods, which it's not going to do at all and ruin anything. Um, so if that happens, this is a good uh, option for to put on just to that list so we can continue our I'm going to go ahead and open up the public portion of this. Is there anybody here that would like to speak in favor of this? Anybody like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, I'll close the public portion and turn it back over to the board. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll turn this over to our next. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. No, you're good. Hearing none, I'll turn it over to her. We'll put this on the next legislative meeting. Moving on to the next one, Mr. Gardner. Right, I move that we put Bill 3435 on its first reading by title only. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell to place Bill 3435 on its first reading by title and description only. All those in favor? An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with Pe Persons and Son Incorporated for construction services related to the 4th Street through 9th Street water system improvements. PowerPoint. Hope I don't PowerPoint you to death. But I'm a very visual person. Um, you all might remember that uh, a few months ago, actually it was in January, uh, we came before you and spoke about a sewer project that we were going to do west of Third Street along Oak and Roberts. This is the water component of that. Um, this is a multi bay multi-stage project, but the goal here is A, economies of scale, and B, to limit our time that we can have negative impacts on this community. Because this is a tight community. This is, uh, this was zoned back in the 50s when lot sizes were much smaller. 
Uh, I can assure you as public work staff that this is an area that look forward here. This is an area west of third that has seen better days when it comes to infrastructure. Now we've seen a lot of revitalization and whatnot. Okay. <laughs> We've seen a lot of revitalization. We've seen a lot of remodels over in this area, but um, we like to think that we need to set the foundation first, just like with the downtown. If you don't have good water, good sewer, good streets, kind of kind of defeats the purpose of really investing in these things. And that's our job. And furthermore, these are uh, projects that uh, we've spoken with many, many residents about uh, sewer backups, about water leaks, about fire protection. All of these things need to be addressed. As public works employees, we really enjoy these types of projects because we're going into neighborhoods that were here since the 50s, and we're finally showing them some attention that's needed. And you know, a lot of these residents have been here for years. And most of them welcome us with open arms after all the issues we've been with infrastructure over there. Um, but just to lay it on the table, this is a big project. And that's why we're presenting it to you all at once, uh, water, sewer, and streets. Now, there are three different bid packets, and there is some strategy in that as well. Um, I'm very happy with the way the bid packets came back on water. We've seen a significant decrease in pipe prices, if you'll remember, a couple of years ago, we were in here thinking about should we start um, Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea at the time, but now two years later, things are starting to come down. I wanna take you through this bid. First off, I wanna remind you of the sewer bid that we did in this area. Uh, we approved all the sewer improvements. And if you'll remember, some of the streets that aren't included in this index sheet, we were able to use that trenchless technology called CIPP. I won't belabor that, but that's why it doesn't look like this. This is our water plan for those same streets. So each one of those C1 through C11, you'll see up there, uh, represent individual sheets in our construction documents. This is a full on complete rehab of the water system in this area. Again, that's primarily for a lot of the problems that are occurring in here. You got to remember these plants were put back in the ground in the 1950s. They run the gores. Okay, we, we hope to get 50 years out of pipes. Uh, a few of these pipes probably have more clamps on them than actual pipe left. Um, but <laughs> but uh, that's why we're here. We're going to remedy that, hopefully. Uh, just to kind of break down the project for you, um, we're looking at about 5,300 linear feet. Seven new hydrants, fire protection is critical in these areas. It also helps with the IOS, and the uh, rates on fire protection. We continue to work with the fire department on defining these areas that need improvements. There will be 62 lateral service connections provided in there. Here's just another breakdown of the map. The legend area, the pink, shows the areas that we'll, where we'll be working. The blue shows the areas within the pink that will be replaced. Uh, so again, a few graphics for you. This is very hard to read. So I made another slide. Uh, we were very, very happy with the bid packets that we received. We received seven qualified bids. And it's been a long time since we've received seven bids. Uh, some of these names I've noticed up here. Uh, some of these names, Alderman Campbell, you may notice a few of these up here. They've been around for a while. Uh, some of them are new names. And actually, the one that we're recommending for approval tonight is Persons and Sons. And uh, this is a, a group that actually is here tonight. Uh, the owner, uh, one of the lead men on the job is here tonight, but they have come so close in several other of our other bids that we put out. Um, and they've been right there this time. They did in fact uh, submit the low bid. I wanna assure you that, um, you know, we're not, we're by no means against working with new people, but we'd like to check references. And we did just that. Uh, and they've worked in several communities around here, including Sparta. Uh, and Sparta completely had a complete overhaul of their water systems. So there have been conversations with them, as well as the city of Carothersville, which is a little further away, Donovan and some private jobs. So we checked those references and people were very content, very happy with the services they provide. I'm very happy with the number they provide. 
and the time frame in which they can do it. So real quick, our engineer problem cost, we did that back last year when we were doing the budget. Uh, again, I think you're seeing more competitiveness in the market and you're seeing the pipe prices come down a little bit. So that has worked in our favor. Basically a $200,000 lower bid than what we thought we would get at that time last year. Um, I want to talk about communication. This is going to be absolutely critical, like with any project. Um, this is a small piece of a new web page that we're building on our website that will talk about every detail of this project. And as the project goes along, we identify the phases, we identify which streets are going to be impacted. That is going to be their portal to the project so that they can remain updated. They can then click and choose if they want emails. We're going to look into texting. Uh, we're going to make a lot of course this Thursday. We'll be out in the neighborhood because we're getting ready to start with the sewer project. We'll be handing out informational flyers, frequently asked questions, just trying to beat the streets to let them know we're coming. And our plan is to get in and get out. I know that's always a good thing, but uh, this one is a tight time frame. But it's because we're literally replacing all three. Uh, you'll see a, a in the future, you'll see a transportation bid packet that will come through, an asphalt bid packet that will include these streets as well. So by the end of this year, we're really hoping that this neighborhood has been completely overhauled. Um, and that, that's it. That's it's a great project. We've had it on our radar for several years. We've spent the last three years getting ready for this project. A lot of the due diligence that we do is things like CIPP, preparing the funds, preparing the bid packets, preparing the engineer drawings. Uh, we're there and we're ready to get in here and knock this project. So with that, I will entertain any questions. Any questions from oh. uh, Tom? Who was, the, who was the successful bidder on the sewer? That was, uh, he's on here as well, Smith and Edwards. Okay. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a part of us that thought, well, maybe that would be great to have the same contractor, but it also is going to help combine forces to get in and get out a little bit quicker. Okay. So. And there are, are there common excavations there to, are to the sewer and water? We're yet to identify those common areas. There's some crossover, but and it really depends upon how we attack the project. Uh, I was just talking with Mr. Persons earlier today. Once this is approved, we're gonna have a mass pre-con with Smith and Edwards as well. And this is gonna be like a dance. It really is. I mean, you talk about an orchestra, you're gonna have to orchestrate this. Communication again is gonna be key. Uh, but we've got the right crews, we've got the right dollar amounts. It's something we needed to do for a while, but those, those are good questions. And I'm guessing the water's pretty much going to be always shallower than the sewer. There's a couple places where we'll have to mess with grades a little bit, but yes, that, and that broad statement is correct. The water is a little more shallow than the sewer. Okay. Um, but we've got everything laid out and we've got everything laid out to where it will work on paper. But like I was telling them earlier today, uh, it always works on paper. So you know how that goes. Yeah, they probably realize that too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we try not to get, get in the way of common sense. If, if there's something that we need to make an adjustment in the field, we'll certainly do that as long as it doesn't compromise the integrity of the project. Okay. So. And we'll be, I mean, you're, be GC and coordinating the work or ever how you want to say that? Yeah, we'll be the project manager and then under the project manager you'll have two GCs in this case if this is approved persons and, and Smith and Edwards. Uh, like I said we've worked with Smith and Edwards on several projects. I'm looking forward to working with persons especially after talking to their references and some other people that they worked with. Okay. I'm looking forward to it too. Me too. It's, right. it's going to be a race. Mr. Snyder. Yeah, what's your, your estimated completion time, your target time? So target time to be done with utilities is by the end of September. And then follow right in behind with the paving crews. And we'll probably do what we do and get it done right at the end of the paving season. 
Uh, but you're looking at an aggressive nine months, basically, eight months, really. Um, but we've talked to all the contractors. They know our schedule. And, and again, we want to get in and get out, not prolong the construction schedule. Gotcha. Thank you. Sir. Mr. Vaughn. So the the 120 day consecutive calendar days to get completed is that per phase of the project or is that for the total project? This is for the total um, water project that's in front the of water, the water. Okay. There. Yeah, the sewer project is already uh, the notice to proceed kicks in on March 12th, and that'll be going simultaneous. So just just for ease of uh, putting numbers in your heads, you've got sewer and water with about a 120 day window. That we're going to be striving for. Yes. Uh, Any other question? I do want. Yeah. One, one other question. You talk about you're going to get out and, and where? What is your scope of folks you're going to be out talking to? So basically, we're going to target everybody in the area and around these streets. Uh, and I guess the best way to find the area is the area that's shaded in yellow there, uh, and just get informational packets, business cards. QR codes, website addresses, I mean, everything. We, we put together a project narrative, and I've read it a couple times, it's probably too wordy, we probably need to cut it down a little bit. But we want them to know the history of the project, we want them to know the scope of the project, and I'd rather them say we gave them too much information than too little, so. Mr. Campbell. One last question. I just thought of, uh, I was going to ask when the sewer project kicked in, but it's got an NTP of 312. March 12th, the next Monday. Okay. The NTP starts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I never asked, and I usually do, uh, about expediting bills and stuff. Since there is a lot of, uh, common things possibly going on here does it make sense to expedite this and get it rolling quicker or is that anything that's been talked about you can, I mean, what you say, so. you can see yeah. you know my face two weeks means a lot for you, as you well know. and if, if the board is open to expediting this i mean we would <laughs> gain two weeks and that's huge because we can lose those in weather like that mm -hmm. uh, but I have been told to back off of expediting bills, and I will respectfully allow you all to make that decision. I'll I'll leave it up to the sponsoring alderman, but I would be in favor of it. Any other questions from the board, Mr. Parsons? Hearing none, I'll open it up to the public. Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this bill? Anybody here to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close, close the public portion of this and turn it back over to the alderman for any other comments or? <laughs> well, I appreciate what Mr. Cameron did. Uh, when Jeremy and I had our meeting earlier this week, nothing was said about that. And excuse me, it has been our, uh, our desire as a board to not expedite things that don't need to be expedited. But in, in light of the, uh, the awful weather that we have, and, and the fact that we could gain two weeks, and then we've already approved the sewer, uh, I would be in favor of uh, moving the board to St. Marie. So I uh, don't see any facial objections. So uh, that being the case, I will uh, move to put Bill 3 board. <coughs> put Bill 3 board, 3 5, on the second reading by Kyle. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Bond to place Bill 3435 on the second reading of the town. All those in favor? Scaling. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with Persons and Son Incorporated for construction services related to the 4th Street through 9th Street water system improvements. Okay. Any other comments from the board? If none, I will entertain a motion. All right, I move that we adopt Bill 335 as ordinance 23 017. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell to adopt Bill 3435 as ordinance 23 017. Thank you to roll call, please. Alderman Vaughn? Aye. 
Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Galloway? Alderman Gardner? Aye. Alderman Campbell? Aye. We have six aye votes. Motion carries. Moving on to second reading and final passage of bills. Uh, Mr. Gardner. Right, I move to leave the bill. <clears throat> but Bill 3428, a second reading by Title only. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Galloway to place Bill 3428 on its second reading by Kyle. And description only. All those in favor? An ordinance amending the zoning code and official map by changing the zoning classification of certain real property, generally known as a parcel approximately 0. 0.42 acres at 1308 South 3rd Street. Okay. Any further questions or comments from the board? All right. I move that we adopt Bill 3428. It's 23-018. Sorry. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Galloway to adopt Bill 3428 as Ordinance 23-018. Can I get a roll call? Alderman Campbell? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Galloway? Aye. Alderman Gardner? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman, Alder? Aye. Alderman Vaughn? Aye. We have six aye votes. Motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Snyder. Your Honor, I move that we place bill number 3429 on its second reading. My title amendment, please. Second. The motion was made by Alderman Snyder, seconded by Alderman Campbell. To place bill 3429 on its second reading by title and description only. All those in favor? An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with the state of Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Okay. Any other comments? Questions from the board? No, no, I'll entertain a motion. Your Honor, make a motion that we adopt bill number 3429 as ordinance number 23-019. Motion was made by Alderman Snyder, seconded by Alderman Vaughn to adopt bill 3429 as ordinance 23-019. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Alderman Galloway? Aye. Alderman Gardner? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Campbell? Aye. Alderman Vaughn? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. We have six aye votes. Motion carries. Okay. All right. Mr. Gardner. And I move to put Bill 3430 on a second reading by title and description. No one. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell to place Bill 3430 on a second reading by title and description only. All those in favor? An ordinance amending the municipal code of the city of Ozark, Missouri, section 720-120, relating to cross-contamination and backflow prevention assembly testing. Any other questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. All right, I move that we adopt Bill 3431 as ordinance 23-021. I think we're on that. Bill 3430. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it did. 23-020. Sir. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Galloway to adopt Bill 34300 as ordinance 23 020. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Campbell? Aye. Alderman Vaughn? Alderman Galloway, Alderman Gardner. Aye. We have six aye votes. Motion carries. Mr. Gardner. On a public. All right, I move that we adopt Bill 3. I move that we put Bill 3331 in the second reading. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell, to place Bill 3431 on its first reading by title, of second reading by title only. All those in favor. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a cost share agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for improvements to Highway CC. Okay, any further questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. All right, glad to get this budget. I move that we adopt Bill 3431 as ordinance 22 Second. 
The motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell to adopt Bill 3431 as Ordinance 22-021. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Alderman Gardner? Aye. Alderman Campbell? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Galloway? Aye. Alderman Vaughn? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. We have six aye votes. Motion carries. Alderman Gardner again. All right, I move that we put Bill 3432 on a second reading by title description only. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell to place three, four, Bill 3432 on its second reading by title only. All those in favor? An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into an agreement for STP advanced funding with the Ozarks Transportation Organization. Any other questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Right, I move that we adopt Bill 3432 as Ordinance 23-022. Second. Okay. Motion was made by Alderman Gardner, seconded by Alderman Campbell to adopt Bill 3432 as Ordinance 23-022. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Vaughn? Aye. Alderman Gardner? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Galloway? Uh, Alderman Campbell. Aye. We have six aye votes. Motion carries. <laughs> okay, moving on to reports of officers, boards, and committees. Mr. Children. Yeah, um, I just wanted to update the board on something that uh, I took part in last week. Um, it's a very busy time up in Jefferson City. There are a lot of bills being filed. Um, a lot of those bills um, stand a chance to move forward. A lot of those bills don't stand a chance to move forward. But <clears throat> many of the ones that have been filed, whether it be in the House or the Senate, um, are of uh, interest and or concern to us as municipalities. Um, there are bills that uh, affect um, our revenue, which is sales tax revenue, property tax revenue, personal property tax. There's a lot of different things going on. Last week, um, I made a trip to, uh, on Wednesday, spent the day in the Capitol, walking around with appointments to meet our local representatives and our uh, our senators, and um, did pretty well. Uh, sometimes you go up there with uh, appointments and you don't quite uh, get to see everybody, <laughs> but you, you spend a lot of time chasing uh, up and down the stairs, but that's okay. It really was a great day. And I want to tell you that uh, I went up there with uh, Jimmy Lyles, the city administrator of Nixa, um, as well as the uh, director of Show Me Christian County, our economic development uh, organization. And it was a great partnership day to go up there. Um, did get to meet with several of our representatives. We did get to share with them the uh, legislative priorities from an economic development standpoint uh, and talk specifically about some of those bills that, that we had concern with. Um, We'll be going up there again at the end of the month. This is kind of my time before May, where I do spend time up at the Capitol and, and building those relationships with the representatives that we'll be working with. Um, that day will specifically be devoted to transportation and transportation needs. Uh, as the president of the Ozark Transportation Organization Board this year, it's important that I go to that, um, not only to speak on behalf of all transportation in the state, but certainly our region and, and the city of Ozark. So I will be going up there again. Uh, wouldn't be surprised um, after talking with our other city administrators in the area that we may actually form somewhat a, a delegation to go up there together, representing cities within Southwest Missouri um, to speak on some of these bills. So busy time, a lot of bills, um, certainly coordinating very closely with our, our lobbying organization, which is Missouri Municipal League, uh, spoke to them while I was at the Capitol. So if you have any questions about those, um, we're compiling lists. Um, of those that might be of interest to you, certainly of interest to us as municipalities that could impact us one way or the other. Uh, we're working with the, uh, the Christie County uh, Economic hey. uh, Committee on that. And if there are any of those that maybe you don't see on the list and then maybe there's something that, that I don't know, um, please let me know if you have a question. Uh, Ms. Calloway, helps me out a whole lot in researching these things and gives me a heads up. I do want you to know also that 
Um, our relationship continues to be very strong with the school. I spoke to Dr. Bauman today. Um, they're not doing anything different than what we are. They have just as many concerns about some bills that are being proposed on their end. And I think the good thing is, is that when we do talk about that, the partners in progress is something that is value and we share that information. So what can hurt the school can hurt the city, or vice versa. You know, and, and we talk about those things and what impact that could have on our entire community. So anyway, I just want to let you know that, that spent the whole day up there Wednesday, probably going to be spending a few more days before session uh, halts in May. So, but if there's any bills of particular interest to you, please let me know so that I can educate myself and the rest of the team so that when we do go up there, we can speak intelligently about that bill. Mr. Gross. Yes. I don't know that there is an existing bill because I don't know if it, if it can be done, but as everybody knows from the, the last time we uh, had the use tax on the ballot and it failed, uh, we lost the right to collect <clears throat> pardon me, to collect sales tax on out-of-state automobile purchases. And of course we limited that, but is there any way that can be reversed in the legislature by a bill? Because I know we have lost it, <clears throat> but can that be put back to the legislation in, in I'm going to let Ms. And, Callaway answer that. And if so, we need to get after Jamie Craig and see what can be done. The um, tax that you're referring to um, was dealt with in a Missouri case, and the case determined that because localities or you know local taxes had not sent that question to the voters that that must be done and what was put forth by the uh, state legislature was just an extension of that time frame giving municipalities and counties time to get that tax before the voters and then they gave a deadline which was this last mm -hmm. year so that deadline is no longer going to be extended um, but at some point the voters would have to make that decision because of the Hancock amendment but that tax was was piggybacked on the use tax. So is there something that we can do separate to put that back on the ballot without it being a use tax? Yes. So the use tax encompassed that tax, but a separate question could always be set forth to the voters by the governing body to ask if they want that tax to be imposed. Well, I think we ought to look into it. Thank you. So, so how much influence do you have? To you actually, <laughs> you actually get to talk to the person that made the bill. Or um, well, I'll just uh, I, I've done this a lot, and I've done this a long time. And uh, two folks that the three folks that went with me, um, to give you a little bit of an understanding, I think uh, they looked over at me at one point and said, "We're certainly glad that you came with us on our first trip. We would have had no idea what to do." Um, I think that we walked from the first floor to the fourth floor about 11 times. Um, what I mean by telling you that story is that you can set up all these meetings and um, you really just got to find people that have, share an interest. Um, and one thing that I would tell anybody that does this is our representatives are very important. And we are. And um, we talked about this on the way home. The trip home is always a good time to, you know, have a car planning session. <laughs> what are we going to do with this information that we receive? But <clears throat> we did feel and we did hear that there were interests from our elected officials to sit down and meet with us. And I think that's very important that Christian County does get their ear and talk to them about the things that we are concerned about. And so we are planning on setting that up on a regular basis and hopefully we'll get good attendance out of that. Um, so as far as influence, I don't know if anybody has any real influence. I think uh, it's a very, uh, you, you have to be there and you have to tell them what you're thinking and you have to take the five minutes that you're given to explain what your concerns are. Uh, I think it's a very tough environment up there. I think there's a lot of politics being played. Uh, there's certainly a lot of partisan decision-making going on. So I don't know, and I'll just say this, I realize that I'm, I'm, I'm in open forum, <laughs> but I'm a city administrator, I'm not an elected official, so I can say this. Um, you know, I, I don't know that all the bills are presented from the standpoint that they really feel like that the sponsor even feels like there'll be traction on the bill. I think it's, it's done sometimes to make a point. Um, and so hopefully those don't gain much traction, but those that could, are just as equally as concerning. So you try to get to the sponsor of the bill, but even if you don't get to the sponsor of the bill, um, 
you, you go to those that will listen. And it doesn't always have to be your district representative. I mean, you can, you, we met with and or communicated with people in the office of representatives from the districts uh, in Greene County and in Webster County and the other counties that, that work in our region. Because when, as part of the Southwest Missouri Council of Governments, that's a 12, that's a 12 county area. And, and what impacts us similarly impacts everybody else. So, you know, I'd like to say that I have a tremendous amount of influence when I go up there, but <laughs> um, I think that you just have to work hard at it. And I think that you you do have to put yourself in front of them. And to be honest, the majority of them respect that, that they appreciate that. They don't have a lot of time, but um, when you do get in the office and you can get past the gatekeeper, uh, you, you, usually, you usually get their ear. So, um, but so you know you can't quit trying. You always have to be up there. You got to be doing the work. So I hope that that's a long answer. But I always, Mr. Vaughn, just I know you said you're compiling a list, but off the top of your head, are there any bills that concern you right now specifically? The city yeah. of Ozark. Yeah, I don't know how much traction they'll get, but there's a lot of different bills that have sought to reduce some portion of the sales tax revenue. You've heard about, um, we, we want to exempt uh, food sales. We want to exempt uh, um, baby formula, baby diapers, uh, women's uh, feminine products. We want to reduce uh, this, that, or the other. There, there are just dozens of special little areas. And when you think about food and you think about uh, the magnitude, it sounds good. I understand it in principle, but in reality, that would devastate probably 80% of your small communities that may have nothing but one Casey's in a grocery store. You know, where what, what are they going to get any revenue um, to provide parks or police services and things like that? Sales tax is our primary source of revenue. It's everyone's primary source of revenue. Um, so that's pretty concerning. Uh, the same is happening on the uh, property tax side. Um, that doesn't impact us as significantly, but it certainly would our school district. Um, so that's one of the areas where the school district is very concerned. And it is both on the real property tax as well as personal property tax. Now the city of Ozark does not collect personal property tax. We get no ports for that. Real property tax, we do, but not nearly as significant as what sales tax would be. So those are some of the ones that were of most uh, interest to us. I'll, I'll give you a last one. Um, it's been talked about for a few years now, but it's gained more traction. The state of Missouri is not a very aggressive state when it comes to uh, offering incentives to learn businesses. Um, and it certainly isn't uh, aggressive from the standpoint of giving incentives to local communities to be able to be utilized. We have some tools in the toolbox, but not many. You all are familiar with terms like CIDs, TDDs, NIDs, those, those, those kind of things. Well, those acron acronyms uh, do exist here. <clears throat> I don't know how they're being utilized in the bigger communities, but uh, there are those that feel like they are not being utilized the way they were intended. Uh, sir, we don't have that situation here, but it is one of our only, if not the only, incentive we have for a developer to actually bring new users to town. Uh, if that were to be harder to achieve, or it, it would be very, uh, it'd be very tough to forward economic development. Um, it's just part of it. So that one has gained a little bit more traction than it's seen in the past. But um, and again, we're going to put all these numbers and bills on a list, and we're going to compile those. One thing that you'll you'll notice when you're talking to the, uh, uh, we're going to make sure when you go in and talk to a, someone of the House representatives. Talk about house bills. When you go talk to the senators, talk about Senate bills. They haven't yet crossed. <laughs> they, they may not know. And now you can give a heads up to someone, which is very important about a bill that may be forthcoming. But you have to keep that sort of separate. Uh, and, and you work it as you go. So, But um, Mr. Vaughn, that, those are the ones that would probably be the top top concern of ours. On the, uh, I assume we talk about the elimination of sales tax on food services. The state, the state removed the state portion of that, what, four or five years ago? I assume they're pushing to do that with municipalities is the proposal. And I don't know that they re 
Well, they haven't produced. They haven't done it to all food. It's um, there's certain areas of that, and sometimes it has to do with whether you use food stamps or you don't use food stamps. Um, now you're seeing it. Uh, we want to do it for senior citizens. No, we want to do it for veterans. No, we want to do it for I don't know <laughs> whatever special interest group may may be. But uh, I was uh, the number of bill, bills on that topic were pretty broad. So. Um, but yeah, it, it, the talk of doing it to municipalities would just be, I, I don't know what we'd do. It would be, it would be very significant to, to our budget. So. <clears throat> Any other questions from the board, Mr. Childers? That's all I have, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, miscellaneous comments, concerns, or announcements from the board? This is all. The meeting. Uh, non legislative meeting. Oh, thank you very much. Um, we were just <laughs> kind of working on this with you all. Um, it really looks like the 23rd is going to be the best day. We normally meet the third Thursday, but the third Thursday this year happens to be spring break. And a lot of people are just not going to be able to make it to that, to that meeting. So um, we were trying to find another Thursday that would work. And it looks like the 23rd is, is kind of winning out right now. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, there may be a partners in progress meeting. It's tentatively scheduled for the 24th. But I don't know if that impacts you. But I'll double check. We've got a, a pre meeting this week, but it's looking like it could possibly be the Friday, the 24th of progress. Um, on my schedule, an evening meeting? No, sir. It is a, mm -hmm. well, let me double check it because it's not 100% set. And so in my calendar, I have it 11 30 to 1, but I, I cannot 100% confirm. <laughs> You've got multiple organizations trying to participate in that, so I will confirm and then send something out. But that would be back to that meeting if you're okay. okay. So 23rd would be the 8.30 to 10.30. Uh, I have a hard cutoff date that time. I got to go to a speaking engagement in Springfield at 11, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll not run over. <laughs> wow. Or if somebody yeah. wants to run over, they can, yeah. but I, I've got to go. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Well, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway, seconded by Alderman Alder to 